Welcome everyone and welcome to today's video. We are at Zelda 4, this fixed setup track guide for the 100% races in iRacing for F1. Um, a track that, yes, you would not see F1 or at least modern day F1 come around anytime soon. <laughs> um, too many chicanes, too many bumps and yeah it just would be uh, carnage to say the least and to be honest that's kind of what i'm expecting um in these 100 percent races but hopefully this track guide can uh, make you guys more consistent make you feel a lot more comfortable in the car and uh yeah a lot more confident heading into the races this week now the lap time that i set was a 104.5 now I do set the track conditions as per iRacing's schedule so that we get consistent track conditions with hopefully what we'll see throughout the week in the sessions and it gives a, a relative overview um, or comparison for you to aim for. Now, I use the fixed setup here, guys, and to be honest, that's probably what I'm gonna use in the open series as well. I used it last week at the Nürburgring and they, it felt really good. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy um, the paid setups. Um, fixed setup should do you just fine. So well done, our racing there. Really been impressed with them in the uh, officials as well, the shorter races. Now, I always run this with a full tank of fuel, and that means that we are limited as well, being in the fixed setup, to a fixed ERS mode or battery mode, so we're on balanced. So it's always quite difficult um, to give um, a, a lap for people to aim for because the battery mode sometimes um, has a mind of its own and wants to deploy in different areas or after a couple of laps. But I try my best, yeah, to, to set that benchmark for you guys and, and for something to aim for. But yeah, as always, we're gonna head into it with a cockpit view of that flying lap. Then we're gonna see that from a far chase camera angle. And then we're gonna analyze that lap, see how we put it together, and finally, with the 100% races, we're gonna discuss a little bit about strategy and what I've learned from uh, the little running that I've done by putting this track guide together for you. So yeah, lo and behold, let's get into it. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button, turn those notifications on, and enjoy.
So everyone, let's see how we put that lap together. Now we have just come out the last chicane, which of course we'll come to at the end of the lap. Very important to get your exit right there and very easy to get it wrong too. Now as always, wanna bring your attention to my brake bias. Uh, I've got it set at 53.5. Did play around with it at 53, which is normally what I have it, have it as. That's as far back as you normally can go. And 53.5 just worked for me. As always in these track guides, as I say, brake bias is a personal preference. Use that as a guide and go from there. Do some testing and see what works for you. Now, the lap. So, down the main straight is we're just going to play it in a little bit of a slower motion than full speed. And we're gonna head down to the first corner. Now there's no DRS down this short start finish straight. And I'm just gonna pause it here because we are currently in seventh gear using the fixed setup for the GP Tour series, as I said, at the start of the video. And what you wanna be keeping an eye out for is the end of the uh, sponsorship here on the right hand side, as you can see Coke Zero. So where it ends, and it just goes to a bland concrete wall, that's when you want to start braking. As you can see, coming off the throttle, starting to brake as we pretty much hit that white um, concrete barrier, basically, on the side. Um, and that's when you start to turn in, trail braking here, controlling the nose of the car, front nose of the car, getting it turning in, and what we want to do here, guys, is we want to allow the car, we want to get two wheels over this curb. Now, of course, we don't want to go over it fully because you will get an off track, but we can cut this curb. And that really allows us to just get on the power quickly and just go through this corner at super speed. So you can see here, I'm getting on the throttle as I hit the apex. So as I'm on the apex here, coming off of it, I'm I'm on full throttle. You need to trust the grip, trust the downforce, and if you get the angle right there and you attack it correctly, you'll be you won't run out of track on the right hand side. Because if you're if you're too wide of that, or should I say, if you're not over that curb, then it delays how quickly you can get on the throttle. Um, because if you get on the throttle at the same point I just did there when you're not over that curb, then you're just gonna run out of track on the outside. And as you can see, there's only gravel here and it's very difficult to stop the car. And uh, also it's very easy to spin it in the gravel. Ultimately, you wanna stay off the gravel entirely. As well as guys, here on the exit of this curb, you only really wanna get two wheels on it. Um, I would say try and avoid getting the middle of your car over this red and white curb because it is quite raised. I don't know if you can quite see there. Um, it's almost like a little ridge and it just, the car bottoms out and you can't get off that curb until the end and you your wheels touch the grass and it is a little bit treacherous coming, or oh, you're dipping your wheels on the grass and then coming back onto the, onto the track. So yeah, be careful there. So very quickly, we're moving the car over to the left-hand side because then we've then got a very fast right-hander. And just bring it back just a touch. Now, really, as always, you want to be looking into the apex when you're approaching the corner and going through it, looking beyond. You don't want to be looking really over to the left-hand side here. Now there aren't really any braking markers. There's no 50 ball marker, 100 ball marker because it's a part, this corner's upon you very quickly. So what I use is in my peripheral vision and then it just kind of becomes a feel, uh, a feel thing just through repetition is I keep an eye out for this hut that's on the left hand side here at the end of the fencing and you can see the end of the barrier which is marked in orange and that's pretty much where I then brake. As you can see, with my throttle inputs, I'm coming off the throttle, braking as the orange barrier is going past my left eye, my peripheral vision. And then I'm shifting down into fifth here, trail braking through, and then similar to the last corner, as we get to the apex, that's when we're on the throttle, trusting the grip, open up the steering, allow it to move over to the left hand side 
try again stay inside these rumble strips here you can see they're quite treacherous uh, you can go over them but you'll lose time and it's uh yeah worst case you can actually lose control of the car then from here you're keeping that steering angle in pointing to the right shifting up through the gears and then hitting the apex once again moving the car over to the left hand side i was a little bit uh too lazy with my turning uh, steering angle there and just uh, dip the wheels but we got away with it and then we come up to our entry of our main overtaking opportunity now this is probably the most important corner on the track um, I would say because it's very fast and it, this is where the, just after this corner we've got kind of the middle straight is what I'm going to call it that is our only DRS zone uh, on this track. Very quick, short, quick track Zolder, especially <laughs> in these cars. And you're turning in just before you get to this concrete runoff here. And then what I did, and what I do as we're running this with a full tank of fuel, is I just gave it a slight lift. Now, for one, that's to manage the tires because this first sector is very, very punishing on the tires, in particular that front left, uh, which we will discuss uh, just after this in regards to a few strategy options and tire wear. And just to give myself a little bit of control. Now, when you have burned off a lot of fuel, you can go through here flat. But I would say a little bit of a lift is always... Um, it's just best but you're better safe than sorry there's no runoff here there's just gravel if you run wide you might be able 50 it's 50 50 um one time you're going to crash one time you're going to be able to keep it back on track but ultimately you want to keep it on the black stuff and a slight little lift you still got enough speed down here and especially with drs as well um you that extra couple of mile an hour that you lose, you easily gain back with the DRS. Now, another thing to be careful of here, guys, as well with that lift is the reason why I've lifted and shown it here for you guys is because if you're following someone, you're going to be in the dirty air and you're going to have a lack of downforce through this corner. Now, to go through this corner flat out, you need all the downforce that you need. And I don't know, in theory, I am saying that if you're following someone, you won't be able to keep your foot down flat out through here um, because you just won't have downforce at the grip. So a li slight little lift just to get the front end turning in uh, tight to this apex, as you can see, inside the rumble strips again. We don't want to touch those, covering as little track as possible. And then you can see here, we are making the use of the red and white curb. Now, the DRS, just as we move this back, the DRS line is on you very, very quickly once you come out of that apex. Um, so much so that you're actually still turning the car when you hit the DRS line, as you can see indicated by the two green dots here. So you need to be pretty on point in regards to deploying that DRS. You can see here that I was a bit slow actually I was very slow only now just deploy the DRS so lost a bit of time there but then we're very quickly down into our first chicane one of three here and this chicane well all the chicanes you're gonna see death <laughs> you're gonna see people lose it on their own there's gonna be crashes people outbreaking themselves and it's better to be safe than sorry through these guys um only go through these as quick as you feel comfortable um so i'm going to show you how i did it and this was a very aggressive uh line through this chicane so you can see here just bring it back a touch i am breaking just before we get to this red and white um, markings on the right hand side on the concrete wall um, that is what I'm keeping an eye out for breaking just before it I don't want to break on it if you break on it you're gonna lock up the tires and you're just not gonna stop it in time 
So if you are overtaking someone on the inside or if you're defending on the inside, you need to be careful that you don't outbreak yourself. Um, so on the left-hand side, you can see they're pretty much in line with each other. So even though you'll be watching someone on your left-hand side or your right-hand side, depending on if you're defending or attacking or whatever, you need to make sure that you break when you're supposed to because otherwise you're just not going to make that chicane even more so on the inside because you're coming in at a much tighter angle so we're going to move this forward and we're going to shift down here into fourth gear guys fourth gear now if you're on a tighter line on the inside as i've just said you will want to shift down to probably third gear to get it slowed uh, slowed down but fourth gear turning in you can see i'm trail braking here controlling the nose of the car and what we can do is we can take our left wheels over this curb now it does get a little bit bumpy but this is the quickest way over the left hand side you can see here i'm on the full throttle once again wheels over the right hand side of that curb got a, a bit bumpy i don't want to take any more curb than that um, because otherwise the car is just going to go up in the air <laughs> and we're going to go flying rather than racing um, so yes uh, just be careful here guys you don't have to attack it as much as I did two wheels just inside the white curb and then the same for the right hand side as well but I was a little bit more than that, a little bit more than probably I would like as well. But it does result in a faster lap time. Um, but as well, another thing to consider there, guys, is that with that, you are risking floor damage. Now, you won't know you have floor damage until you, well, you will know you have floor damage because you'll start losing speed. And you'll be thinking, well, I haven't hit anyone. My front wing is intact. Well, that's because your car is bumping up and down and you've damaged the floor. And the only way to repair it will be when you come in for a pit stop. Uh, so we've got 77 laps around this. Um, if you damage your floor in the first couple of laps, it's a long old, it's a long old race ahead of you with a damaged car. And you need all the speed you can get around here because uh, there's not a lot of overtaking opportunities. So you need kind of all the acceleration and top speed that you can get. So we've gone through our first chicane and we're keeping it tight down this left-hander and we're coming into our second chicane. So what I personally keep an eye out for is I'm keeping an eye out for the red and white curb on the left-hand side. Now, once again, there's not anything, there's no braking markers, there's nothing on the left-hand side that I'm really keeping an eye out for. My vision is purely straight ahead, looking at the red and white curb here. And I wanna be braking a good few meters before it, as you can see. That's the only really way that I can describe it. There's nowhere, there's, there's nowhere, nowhere in the track for me to brake. If you was to say specifically, I'm braking on the shadow of this tree, I don't like to rely on shadows because throughout a race session, especially a race that's an hour and a half long or about that, the the sun could go behind the clouds and we could lose that shadow. We could lose our braking marker. So I don't like to rely on it. I like to just kind of get a feel, um, but that's why we need to practice. But yeah, that's me braking on that shadow, braking in a straight line, and then we're down into third gear trail breaking through and then what we want to do here guys as we just bring it back is we want to get our wheels as close to this white sausage curbs as we can you can see there we went through the dip we didn't actually go over the sausage curbs it's very very easy this chicane to pick up one x's now we do only have 17 x throughout the course of the race and I could tell you now, it'll be very, it's so, so easy to get 17X just for this chicane alone, like 1X is every single time. Um, so don't bite off more than you can chew. And uh, that's the case for all of, 
all the chicanes around here really um, because that's where the races are going to be won or lost how well you take them but also how safely you take them as well and um, because these cars have got a lot of torque it's very easy to get on the throttle too early um, and just get a little bit eager and just spin up the rears and lose the car but you can see here very quickly your steering wheel is right then left um, and then you're not i'm not even really applying the throttle here you're just allowing the momentum of the car through the entry of the chicane to carry you through and then we're doing exactly the same thing here if i just show you trying to keep it as close to these sausage curves as we can now actually this one we did go over those white sausage curves a little bit more than i would like because this is very very risky i would say this part of the chicane is where you will pick up all of your incident points um, not so much on the entry, although it is possible to do that. This is the one where people turn in too early, myself included, and you just pick up a 1x. And it can be that you cut this too much and you end up getting a slowdown, which is so, so painful. So yeah, be wary there, guys. As I said, don't bite off more than you can chew. And then as we're coming out of this chicane, we're starting to apply the throttle, but easily because we've got a lot of steering lock on at the moment and then as you can see i'm off the throttle again just controlling the car same principle keeping it as tight to those sausage curves as we can slowly applying the, uh, the pressure on the throttle unwinding the steering wheel going to be very you're going to see a lot of people spin the car there because as i just said very tempting to get your foot down on the throttle very quickly but you will spin it trust me and then you can see as we've got as the car has stopped moving about and all this happens in a couple of seconds um, but you'll feel the car settle down that's when you know you can get on full throttle use the curb nice and flat and then keep it tight here without hitting those rumble strips working your way up the gears over to the left hand side cover as little track as possible and then we come down into the hairpin which is another overtaking opportunity so if you're able to stick it stick close behind someone for that chicane of course be wary give them i would say you're better off being giving the people through that chicane a little bit of room in front of you you don't want to be right on their behind you want to make sure that you're far enough back to, to react to them spinning because if you're right behind them uh, you're just gonna you're just gonna go straight into them uh, of course we race we're put into different splits in iRacing, racing and we're racing with people of all different levels also with the tour series being a c class license um a lot of people who are competing in these in this particular series don't race this car as often as the people who race the officials, the standard fixed and open series. So there's also that to take into consideration as well, guys. So as I said, we all wanna make it to the end of the race. That's the most important thing. Um, so yeah, concentrate on the exit of the chicane, not so much the entry and following people through. It's like try, and, try and make sure you get a nice traction out of the corner and then drive past them. But this is uh, one of the overtaking opportunities. So. Keep an eye for the 100 bulb marker on the left hand side. Braking in a straight line and we are going to be braking all the way down into second gear. Looking into the apex and through it. And then what you want to do guys is try and lift off the brake. Bra slow the car down enough that you're able to lift off the brake and allow the momentum of the car to carry you through the apex. You don't want to be covering the brake through the apex that's the key to this corner so you can see as you reach the peak of the apex that's when you then can start getting on the throttle nice and easy though because we've got full steering lock you don't want to get your foot down too quickly because we're in second gear we've got a lot of torque in the car we just if you get your foot down any quicker you're just going to spin it and then as you unwind the steering wheel very quickly you're going to be working your way up through the gears covering as little track as possible so the hairpin is all about 
making sure you slow that slow the car down enough so that you can roll it through the corner without having the brake applied through the corner and then easing on the throttle making sure you've got the steering wheel straight or opened up at least before you get on full throttle then we come down very quickly to the last chicane now you could also make an overtaking opportunity down here as well um, so there's, there's a couple of there's a couple of opportunities around here i would they're all pretty much kind of not into the chicanes it's, it's into the first chicane the hairpin um this chicane and even the first corner as well there's a lot of overtakes for the first corner so this one here what you want to keep an eye out for is the bridge now you can see there's a shadow of the bridge there we're breaking just before it as you can see down through the gears through third gear trail braking get the, get the nose turning in and then i actually took a little bit too much curb here i went over those sausage curbs a little bit more than i would like same principle as the previous chicanes we want to be tight to this apex without being on the sausage curbs because it just unsettles the car you're risking floor damage as well especially over the course of a the course of the race and then slowly applying the throttle we hit the second chicane there or the second part of the chicane was much better we was nice and tight where we want to be and then we're slowly applying the throttle moving the car over to the left hand side and then across the finish line and there we go guys that is a lap of zolder uh, a 104.45 uh, it comes at you so quickly these corners um, it's a very quick track it's going to be interesting especially with those chicanes um, i've raced f3 round here a number of times and those races are interesting to say the least and uh, yeah these these cars are, are 10 times as quick so uh yeah really looking forward to it but let's have a, a little discussion now about some potential strategies around here because as always 77 lap race tire degradation tire choices choosing when to pit choosing when not to pit um strategy plays a big element in these series so yeah let's have a let's have a little discussion of uh, what i discovered in the testing that i did um and yeah what i can suggest so guys let's talk strategy now as we know it's very important in the real life of f1 and that's no different to the length of these races as well we have got 77 laps to uh, get around Zolda for this race and that means uh, yes uh, making the right choice uh, in regards to strategy and tire choice is going to be uh, a big factor here now after doing some testing this track is actually very painful on the front tires in particular the left tire that first section is or first sector is just so painful on the left tire um, so I found that after doing 14 laps on the soft tire, I came down to around 60%. Now that was running at full speed. I was trying to race the socks off this thing, um, but that's that's quite alarming because then that means really the soft tire is only gonna last around 30 laps um, because that means it's gonna get down to about 20% with uh, after 30 laps of racing full out 100% and that's without any lockups as well and as we know there's a number of scenarios that means that we could end up locking up those fronts and uh yeah using even more of the tire so something to be aware of but a soft tire is by far the fastest tire around here i did some running on the medium tire and while it degraded of course um, a lot slower than the um, soft tire it was around 70% after 18 laps. It was on average around six to seven temps slower per lap. Uh, it just didn't have uh, the traction that I required and just didn't give me um, the stability and the braking that I needed. Uh, so 
Yeah, uh, you're obviously trading off to be able to go longer, but you're gonna be going slower. Now the hard tire, I haven't actually done any testing on the hard tire, but I do think the hard tire is a potential option for a strategy round here. Now, to me, there are three potential, or four potential strategy options. You have the standard medium tire, going to softs so that will require some tire management on the medium tire to try and make it go to around 40 laps 45 laps and then doing going on to the soft tire now to me i think that's a bit of a tall order um, i just think the front tires just aren't gonna last that long and as well there is no runoff areas around this track so if those tires get down to 20, 15%, you're gonna be squiggling about so much, you're probably gonna be losing a lot of time by lifting off the throttle just to keep the control of the car. And of course, we don't want to go into that gravel because uh, yeah, your race is gonna be over with. Second option is to go onto uh, a hard, to softs so you could run a lot longer sacrifice some lap time early on in the race but make sure that you go a lot longer and then change onto those soft tires um, around the 25 lap mark and just rein it in just go hammer to tong hammer time and just uh, go for it i'm i'm edging towards that at the moment um but i'm I don't know. I'm going to have to do a little bit more testing to figure out how much like a time um, or how much time I'm going to lose being on those hard tyres at the start. The third option is to start on the softs and to uh, just try and get as much of a lead as you can. Try and um, break out as, as much time and put a gap between you and the guys behind and then change onto the hards. I think if you take that approach with a full tank of fuel, um, you're just going to end up uh, taking too much out of tyres. Um, so by the benefit of having the soft tyre at the end of the race is that you're on lighter fuel and you're just going to be able to go that much quicker as well. And a little bit longer because you won't have as much weight transferred or loaded onto the tires. The final one is a little bit uh, of, depends on how your race is going, is to start on the medium tire and then do a two stop race. So go as fast as you can on the mediums, no tire saving, then go to the softs and then do another stop on the softs. Um, that, to me, I'm I'm edging towards the hard to softs, and then or the medium, and then a two stop race with softs. Um, it's it's a difficult one. It is a real difficult one. And the thing is, is that we have no officials, um, i.e., fixed races or open setup races, to to give us uh, an idea of what the tire life is going to be like over a half length race. Um, so. Yeah, gonna be interesting. Gonna be interesting to say the least. Say the least. Um, it's a track that is just uh, is is gonna uh, it's gonna throw up some some um, it's gonna throw up a lot of death. <laughs> so if you can keep it out the barriers, if you can avoid the spinning cars, the crashes, you're gonna have a good finish here, guys. Um, and yeah, it's um, the last hundred percent race I did was a lot of effort so make sure you do some practice practice your starts practice um seeing what you feel most comfortable on not everyone feels comfortable on the hard tire um you're going to end up with a little bit less grip than you are on the well you are going to end up with less grip than you are on the softs um uh, but you're going to be able to go that much longer in the race so yeah i personally love the strategy side of things uh hopefully uh, they they work out for you. I wish I could give you a solid strategy that will work, but yes, my my two um, my two options that I think I'm going to present is uh, the hard tire, moving on to the soft at the end of the race, and then the double stop, the mediums, 
softs, then softs, the two stop race. Um, I think, because let's be honest, a lot of people probably won't be able to do tire management. It's quite difficult to do tire management in that first sector as well. Um, because it just leads into your first, your only DRS zone and the pr a prime overtaking opportunity. Uh, no one is really going to be thinking about lift and coast through there and thinking about their tyres. So, plus as well, track temperature. Track temperature that I set this lap time in and I was doing these laps in was the mid to high 20s. So, if it creeps up into the 30s, then I think it definitely is going to be the hard tyre. If it uh, sticks around the, 20, uh, the mid 20 mark, then yeah, possibly a two stop race, possibly. Don't know. Only problem is, is that you lose quite a bit of time in the pits with a two stop race. Even as I'm doing this now, I still don't know what I'm, <laughs> what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's giving you guys a little bit more of an overview um, and a base to go from. Hopefully you can pick a strategy and uh, and go with it and feel comfortable with it. Um, we've got a few opportunities throughout the week to be able to test it out. So hopefully one of them works for you. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Hopefully you'll be able to uh, have some good experiences this week at Zolder and in this car. It's a brilliant car, personally my favorite on iRacing at the moment. And yeah, hopefully this makes you more consistent and faster. So yeah. See you guys. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Turn those notifications on and bye.